Well, we actually uh, decided to do our record this time around, not in our comfort zone, so we went to Atlanta, Georgia. About four five or five weeks. weeks, we pretty much did everything. Including the mixing and everything. That was by far the quickest we've ever made a record. Plus, because we were in Atlanta, we didn't have, um, you know, like... Anything friends, better to do? Friends stopping <laughs> by the studio, having to, you know, go run errands or anything. It's impending redneckism sinking in. <laughs> Being up here in the mountains is uh, having an adverse effect on these guys. Into <laughs> <laughs> oh, she made it! The good thing is, though, the record doesn't sound like it was made quickly. It sounds like it had a, uh, you know, a lot of care put into it and a lot, a lot of thought. But it just so happens that it only took four weeks to do that. Ah, uh, Brendan O'Brien. We knew that uh, he was the guy to make our record with because we had made a bunch of records before, and the thing I think that consistently was missing from our records was the energy of the live performance. He uh, produced a lot of our favorite records. He produced all the Rage Against the Machine records. Yeah. A lot of the Pearl Jam albums as well. So, I mean, just a lot of those bands we were all into. He also mixed uh, Super Unknown from Soundgarden, which is one of my favorite records ever. Plus, like I said, he's a real snappy dresser, and uh, that actually, he did a lot of interpretive dancing on the record, too. If you listen really hard, you can hear it. He's a great dancer. Great dancer. Modern. Modern. Very modern. Modern interpretive style. dance. Yeah. So, no, I, um, before I played in Nicky Bisc, I played in The Roots. And I met these guys in 2001 on the Area One tour. We'll be working on a song idea and, and we'll be trying to figure out where to go next. And right. usually, um, you know, we'll just start playing. And uh, that's something actually that Ben's been very helpful with during the writing process of, of this new record. Um, he's offered lots yeah. of very helpful information in uh, the songwriting process. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, turn me yeah. up the headphones. Yo. And Ben sang in uh, Crow Left of the Murder. What else did you sing? I don't remember. Oh, Agoraphobia, there's a little tiny part in... Oh yeah, the... Oh, the, like the bridge. The bridge, yeah. just sort of um, became comfortable with what I'd been playing for a long time and never really branched out from, you know, gear-wise. You know, now I'm back to spending all night playing with all my pedals and, you know, trying different guitars and stuff. I told you pedals sound twice as good when they're stacked on top of other pedals. Playing with a swollen pickle. It's called a chaos pad. So you just want to go. Oh, in other words, what I like to hear is that kind of almost a continuous kind of thing going through there. The sick Taurus. Uh, oh, drop with the V6. Yeah, drop with a V6. See this? Your vinyl, homie. You don't see that much. Vinyl, cloth interior. See this? Left and right side mirrors, not just middle. Straight analog. Analog. This is analog. You got, you got analog system up in there. It's yeah. got that analog on there, so it sounds a little warmer. Yeah. <laughs> Can you make the the clean amp? Dirtier. Dirtier, sure. Dirtier. Of course. Dirtier. Of course, yeah. One of my favorite things about making records especially is the fact that it gives you the opportunity to snapshot you at that particular moment, whether it's what you're playing on your instrument, or in my case, what I'm writing about, what I'm singing. Get 
past your fourth or fifth album, you start driving like this, because you can. You know what I'm saying? Just chilling. <laughs> oh my god! You know who that is in that car? That's Incubus! We like surfing a lot. It's really fun. In Orlando, Florida, at Disney World, there's a wave pool there that you can surf and it's really fun. Kill had some good wipeouts. Yeah. That was good, that was surfing. fun. I try surfing because it's real frustrating for me because I don't know how to surf. Well, surfing's been something I've, I've been doing since I was like 12 or 13 years old. And um, it's kind of been my number one passion in life. That's actually the, the one thing that's been really difficult about my career with Incubus is it's meant that I've had to sacrifice my career as a professional surfer. But I still train hard every day, um, you know, in hopes of making a comeback into the world of surfing at some point. Awesome. We are done. We accomplished what we needed to accomplish.